I came across a video yesterday on Rumble that really grieved me. This guy, this preacher had over 10,000 followers and he's preaching that the book of Revelation already took place. He's saying that he's basically telling people that we don't have to prepare for it, that there's no concern, there's no alarm. He's preaching that um, all these different generations before us taught that their time period was the book of Revelation and it never happened. Giving examples, trying to sway people into believing that it's not a futuristic revelation of Jesus Christ, that it happened in the past. And the problem with this that really grieves me and grieves my spirit is that people were falling. He had over 10,000 followers. Almost 4,000 people had watched that video and gotten, he'd gotten different likes and comments of people, you know, Christians, believers saying how complicated the book of Revelation is to understand and thanking him for explaining it. And the issue with this is it's leading people astray. It's damaging people. It's causing the body of Christ to be unprepared for what is coming. It is completely against the will of God because the will of the Lord is to prepare his bride, to prepare his church for what is going to unfold in the book of Revelation. So I'm mean, we're going to take a look at the some of the scriptures that indicate that it has not happened yet, that it has not that most of the events have not occurred yet. What has occurred, what did occur was the message to the churches, the seven churches in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now, because it is a prophetic book and a prophetic revealing of Jesus Christ, those same messages that Jesus spoke to the church then applies to the church now. All of it. All of it applies. So it's not just a history book of something that occurred, but uh, some of this doctrine comes from what's called preterism, and what they say is, is that all of this occurred in 70 AD when Rome invaded Jerusalem and tore down the temple. And the book of Revelation was fulfilled during that time period. For one, the, book, the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John, the apostle who also operated and functioned as a prophet, was not given to him until 96 AD when he was exiled to the Isle island of Patmos by the Roman emperor Domitian. Now, this is what was believed and taught by the early church fathers. This is the traditional viewpoint around that time period of 95, 96 AD. Some people have said 92 AD, but generally speaking, they agree on 95 to 96 AD is when John was exiled there and received the revelation of Jesus Christ. The visions that are very, very similar to Daniel, the second witness, so to speak, with the book of Daniel, speaking to us of the end time, the end of time of this age, I should say, not the end of time, the end of this age, the coming of the new age, the kingdom age of Jesus Christ, of which he will return and rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. So I'm going to take a look at a few of the uh, scriptures here. And this is why I did the other video uh, just yesterday on the misconceptions of the Antichrist is because there are so many false teachings and false doctrines out there and misconceptions of how the Antichrist will be. The enemy just wants to muddy the waters. He wants to put all this misinformation, whatever disinformation out there and to muddy the waters so that we, we will actually miss who the Antichrist really is because we'll have all these preconceived notions. We'll have all this false teaching and false doctrine and these misconceptions of who the Antichrist is. And so we'll miss who he really is because we'll say, well, he can't be this because he has to be Jewish or he has to be this or he has to be that, right? Because of all the teaching out there. And so we'll actually miss it. So that's why the burden of the Lord is on this, is the Lord doesn't want us to miss 
who the, his revealing to us who the Antichrist is. And he doesn't want us to miss the fact that we are in the time of the unfolding of the book of Revelation. We are at the time of Revelation chapter 6. As Jesus is beginning to break open the seals and his judgments are beginning to come up on the earth. So, first of all, the first scripture I want to take a look at is Revelation chapter 4, verses, verse 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking to me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after these things. Okay, so first point I want to make is that this is a personal encounter with John. I've heard all sorts of teaching about this is the rapture and the church is he's saying to the church, come up here and rapturing the church into heaven. For one, it doesn't say that. This is a specific encounter with John. John is being told, come up here. John is going through the open door. John is receiving a caught up, so to speak, encounter like Paul talked about. And he's being caught up into heaven and receiving a revelation. Okay, so this is specific to him. This is not speaking to anyone else, only to John. That's point number one. Point number two is that he heard a voice. He did not hear a trumpet. This is not a trumpet sounding. He heard a voice like a trumpet, meaning it's it, the, the sentence is a simile. <laughs> if we can remember back to grade school when we learned what a simile was, I had to look it up again, right, to get the proper definition of a simile. He heard a voice like a trumpet. A simile is, a, is the comparing of two unlike things. Okay, so John's not hearing a trumpet. He's hearing a loud voice. It's just he's using the language of a trumpet to describe it, to describe the loud voice that he heard. So this is not one of the seven trumpets sounding. That's point number two. Point number three is that John was shown what will take place after these things. After what things? After the things spoken of in Revelation chapter two and chapter three. So what, what, the, the, what is being revealed to John here is things that will take place in the future, future events. Now we know that the everything was not fulfilled for a number of years in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, meaning what Jesus spoke to the churches. It took a while for the fulfillment of those things. So if the revelation, this revelation was given to John anywhere from 92 AD to 96 AD, that it was going to take a number of years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, for those things that Jesus spoke of to the churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 to be fulfilled. After those things, then these events could begin to unfold. Okay, so let's just doing making this very clear here. Meaning that what was going to take place from Revelation chapter 4 on to the end of the book would not be fulfilled in the first century, according to scripture, according to the time that John was given this word. And according to the fact that this, these things could only take place after Revelation 2 and 3 had run its course and been fulfilled. All right, so that sets us as a baseline for the rest of what we're going to be talking about. And this is good. We're going to look and examine some scriptures here that indicate that what is talked about in the book of Revelation has not taken place. This is absolute proof that the book of Revelation is going to unfold in our time and in the future from where we're at now. Okay, it has not happened yet. It has not occurred yet like the teaching that is going around of many that is starting to damage the body of Christ. 
Okay. Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. An event like this has not occurred yet, where a third, a third were, were burned up, a third of the earth. Um, Revelation chapter 8, verse 12. Then the, the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, and a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. That's a big one right there. Has the sun ever been struck to where a third, to where it's darkened, and a third of the day is no longer? That hasn't happened in human history. So, so we can rationally look at this scripture and say, okay, at no point in time did that ever happen. Revelation chapter 9, verses 13 through 18 speaks, of, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but it speaks of, of a time where a third of the earth's population has been killed. So the four angels who had been prepared for that hour and that day and that month were released to kill a third of mankind. Okay, so that is a global, uh, worldwide event that would absolutely be notated in history even if it would have have occurred in the first century, it, it would be that significant. Nothing like that ever occurred. Nothing like that ever happened in the first century. Clearly, that has not taken place. Clearly, that is a future event. The two witnesses resurrected in Revelation chapter eleven, verses eleven. Uh, verses 11 through 12. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. And they ascended into heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw it. So very clearly, very clearly, nothing like that has ever happened as far as the two witnesses being killed and then resurrected from the dead and then raised up raised up into heaven where the whole world could see. Nothing like that has ever happened. And the final scripture that I want to give to indicate that the book of Revelation, the events of Revelation, have not occurred yet, and they are for the future, is Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. It's the rising of the beast, the second beast, which is the false prophet. He performs great signs, and he even makes fire fall down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That is that has never occurred. We have not seen a false prophet on the earth calling down fire. Nothing like that. No events like that have ever been recorded in history except for when Elijah called down fire and he did it three times, the prophets of Baal, and then in 2 Kings chapter 1, he called down fire two more times on men that were trying to come and kill him, that were sent by the king of Israel to come and capture him. He called down fire on them. So those are the only recorded times where a man is, or a prophet is called down fire. Here we're talking about a false prophet, the false prophet calling down fire, not just a false prophet. There are many false prophets. We're talking about the false prophet calling down fire. That has clearly not happened yet. Also, it says as it says in here uh, as well in this scripture um, that there the false prophet will create uh, have a mark of the beast created. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you guys know the scripture, and that no one can buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So, no time in human history. Has this ever occurred? In fact, no time in human history have has this been able to occur except now in our day. Think about it. People in past times and in past years, and specifically, especially 2,000 years ago, were farmers, were ranchers, were hunter-gatherers. They wouldn't need to take a mark to buy or sell. 
because they're raising much of their own produce, their own crops, their own animals worldwide, okay? So no one's gonna need to take a mark to buy or sell when they're able to produce their own goods or they're able to just barter or trade with their neighbors who are producing goods. Like someone's a farmer and they trade with their neighbor who's a rancher or whatever the case is. This was so 2000 years ago, but over the last hundreds, the, over the last hundred years, 200 years, we've drifted into a place of complete uh, dependence on, you know, uh, on the system, so to speak. And over the last 20 years, it's everything has gone to internet. Everything has gone digital. So there's there's talk of going digital currency. We're already uh, we already have everything in 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 bank accounts, and and we're paying for things by credit cards. It's it's everything's drifting away from uh, cash, to where that's that's no longer how we pay for things. So um, we're moving into a time period where they can just freeze your bank account. Where the the antichrist system being set up, when we all uh, moving towards this global currency and this digital currency, where then all of a sudden everything is online, and your 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 account can be frozen to where you can no longer uh, pay for things, you can no longer buy and sell, and the only way that you're going to be able to buy and sell is by taking a mark, having the the number of his name or the name of the beast. But never before has that has that been able to occur. Uh, that that wasn't possible even a hundred years ago. That wasn't possible. So that's what I'm saying, and that's the point we're making here: is that if you really want to know the truth, the scriptures reveal the truth. This could not have occurred before. None of this could have occurred before. On this simple, on these simple facts alone, from Revelation thirteen eleven through eighteen. So I just pray for wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to be released, and I pray that this, that the Lord would get this out to where it needs to go, so that people would not be swept away in any of the delusion and divisive schemes that Satan is bringing upon the body of Christ in this hour because the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be prepared for what's coming and to be ready for the unfolding of the events of the book of Revelation.